thinking of investing, working, or starting a business in the cannabis industry? We've got you covered right here on Plant Problems. Hosted by Tony Frischconnect, Plant Problems takes a different approach to cannabis than what you're seeing and hearing from the mainstream media. Come along with Tony and be in the know about how to invest, work, or start a cannabis business. Let's get the show started with your host, Tony Frischconnect. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Plant Problems. I'm your host, Tony Frischknecht. Please hit the subscribe button for the podcast or YouTube channel so that you can receive alerts when we have new shows come out. Guys, it's the easiest way to follow us and make sure you're getting caught up on everything cannabis and regulation, tax, investing, so much more. Guys, I'm excited to have you guys here today listening in. Um, Cannabis is ever changing, right? And there are so many things that uh, we we are getting in front of us on a daily basis that are changing the way we look at our businesses and the, changing the way uh, the future in cannabis is expanding. So, speaking of expanding, uh, I came across uh, this is a brand new article. So, uh, if you guys aren't familiar with MJ Biz uh, Daily. They are a great source for news. So this actually is an article that uh, I found from their site. And so today we're going to be talking about how the IRS is going to help our business. Uh, this <laughs> this sounds um, kind of counterintuitive. Well, how can they help us? Well, they haven't helped us really in cannabis mostly because we're not federally legal, right? And so what it comes down to is, well, what can they really do for us? So they've been auditing us, um, as many of you know, uh, for quite some time, uh, but they haven't really given us any clear guidance. Now, this clear guidance is... uh, a double-edged sword. They're going to be giving you information um, to help you uh, file your taxes. However, as most of you know, uh, this also draws a line in the sand, right? So when you go into arguing for certain costs or trying to reduce your taxes that you have to pay every year, it makes it more challenging. So this is this is a this is a little bit sticky right here, but I want to talk about this. Let's go through this real quick. So, the IRS launched a program aimed to helping businesses in state legal cannabis markets pay their federal taxes properly under 280E. The erroneous section of the U.S. tax code that disallowed standard deductions for such businesses. Okay. This program, titled the Cannabis Marijuana Initiative, was announced on the IRS website and written by D. Lon Harris, Commissioner of the IRS Small Business Self-Employed Examination Division. So this is this all sounds good, right? They're coming out. They're giving us some information to follow. Okay, let's see what else. Okay, the goal of the initiative is to implement the strategy to increase voluntary compliance with the tax law while also identifying and addressing non-compliant. Harris wrote, highlighting the fact that the IRS website also has a specific information page for those in the cannabis space. Seems like they're going the right direction, but is this really helpful to you and your business? Harris wrote that the new program will entail more training and job aids for IRS agents conducting marijuana business audits. Not exactly sure what that means, more aids. Um, Looks like they're going to be doing some training. So my guess is they're going to be taking some of the auditing information that they've gotten from the industry over the last decade, and they're going to be training their officers to use some of this information uh, to conduct 
better audits. That's what I see. Um, let's see. So some more things that it entails coordination and a consistent approach by the IRS towards entire cannabis industry. That doesn't really make that much sense. I'm not sure exactly what that means either. Figuring out new ways to identify non-compliant taxpayers. <laughs> that sounds tricky. Okay, so what I've noticed that when dealing with the government, especially the IRS, is they're going to spend their time on the people that are following the guidelines and they're going to start it's just the easiest thing for them to do. Now, I know Biden is coming out pledging all this uh, $10 billion in funding to help uh, the IRS audit, you know, some of these larger um, entities and, um, you know, the very wealthy. So I know that's coming. However, I'm not sure exactly how they're going to take that. But anyway, that's what they're, that's what it entails. It says collaborating with external stakeholders to educate more in the industry as their tax obligations under 280. That tells me that they're going to be, uh, you know, they're probably going to be going to some events. They're probably going to be creating some um, IRS events for people to come check out, which that's good. You're probably going to see, uh, accountants and CPAs attending these. I know taxes are not uh, the most exciting thing. However, they are uh, one of the most beneficial things to understand when trying to take a profit home at the end of the day. Okay. Disinseminating more information to those in the industry on how to comply with 280. Again, I think they're going to take the auditing information that they've that they've built up over the last several years and they're going to say this is how you do this this is how we allow this this so they're going to start dissecting that for you again this is this is a positive thing especially for the accounts out there that that don't know anything about the cannabis industry they need to be aware of this harris goes to say this is truly groundbreaking efforts for our agency. So he's patting himself on the back. Way to go, Commissioner Harris. <laughs> Harris added that he's been conducting outreach to those in the industry and has spoken at three cannabis industry events in the past year. Um, well, I'm not sure which ones he spoke at. However, for those of you guys that have been trying to go to events since the lockdown has let up. Uh, I'm not sure that they're, they're like massive events. So you got to take that with a grain of salt and be like, okay, well really how much, how many events and how, how many people has he actually reached outreach to and gotten information? He goes on to say, he clarified, however, that cannabis and marijuana business owners also need to understand that all cash intensive businesses can be and are audited. That's pretty plain in his day telling you that if you're in cannabis, you're going to be audited right now. <laughs> okay. So, so now let's actually go to review. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to review this IRS page that gives some direction to you, the business owner on what needs to happen and you know, how to be compliant as a taxpaying citizen or a taxpaying entity. I'm actually going to list this in the, you're going to see this in the YouTube. So there'll be a link there. There'll also be one on the blog page. So you can uh, go through and read and click on, see the details of this. So a key component in promoting the highest degree of voluntary compliance on the part of a taxpayers is helping them understand and meet their tax responsibilities while also enforcing the law with integrity and fairness to all. The article provides general guidance, including frequently asked questions for taxpayers in the marijuana industry. Okay, so IRS code 280 and the marijuana industry. 
businesses that traffic marijuana in contravention of federal and state law are subject to limitation of Internal Revenue Code Section 280E. The marijuana industry facts link below addresses federal tax filing and information report requirements specific to taxpayers in the industry. Okay, so they have a report. Again, you want to go into depth on this. I just want to touch on this to make sure you guys are aware so you guys can access this information. Again, and take this information that I'm giving you and not only read it yourself, but share it with your uh, tax preparer or your CPA, whoever you have doing that for you. Income from any source is taxable and taxpayers are generally required to file a tax return to report that income to the IRS. Many marijuana industry businesses conduct transactions in cash, which need to be reported like any other form of payment. Okay, so, and then there's a publication guide you can click on here to find some more. For, so far, this is pretty standard practice for any business. Uh, now we have cash payment options. Cash payment options are available for unbanked taxpayers. Some IRS taxpayers assistance centers accept cash. Call this number for location near you. Okay, so... This is something that I experienced uh, just paying our city tax. And you guys may be having this issue right now. Uh, what's happened is a lot, of, a lot of places won't accept or they never accepted tax payments in cash, which is, you know, the, this, is, this is going back here now you know, we were supposed to report our income, which I just stated before here, income, income reporting. But now there's a catch 22. And there has been for quite some time that you couldn't go and pay this, um, your tax payments in cash. That is, hasn't always that hasn't been the case for a while in a lot of states. Now your newer states, you're probably going to have to figure out how to do this still. Now, this coming out is a positive, right? That means if you have an issue and it's like, well, let's call this number and see where the location I can drop this cash off. Great. To call to see where your options are, it's 844-545-5640. Okay. Call that. It says maybe near you. So you could have some issues. The great thing about this though is if you have somebody that's arguing with you uh, that's at one of these facilities, you can pull this out and say, look, the commissioner has come out and made a statement. Here's your stuff. I'm allowed to pay this. You're going to find that the end, I mean, this just came out. So you're going to find that most of your government entities are not going to hear this through the great band fast enough. They might send out an email, but you know how emails are. They stack up in your inbox. So I recommend if you're having issues, just print this out, bring this guide with you and say, look, this allows me to do so. All right, now let's go next. Large cash amounts. Any person in a trade or business who receives more than 10000 in cash in single transaction or in related transaction must file form 8300, report of cash payments, over $10,000 received in a trade or business. Okay, and you're required to do this within 15 days. So I know there's a lot of um, MIPS licenses out there that are receiving payments in cash from the dispensaries now, you got to be real careful with this um, because you can get in trouble. There's a thing called structuring, right? Now, what structuring is, is going in and making cash deposits in your accounts or multiple accounts under that $10,000 limit. Guys, the IRS is wise to this. Um, you need to make sure you're following these guidelines to the T because they don't mess around. I mean, this is something that they've been 
uh, tracking for a long time. And even if you go and you try to put in 9,500 this day and the next day, come in and deposit 3,400 and you keep doing this, they will actually add that up. And I believe it's within a 30 day, 15 or 30 day period. And they can actually start watching you as a business because of this, because you're avoiding filling out these uh, cash deposit slips. So speak to your CPA or your accountant and just decide on how you want to approach this and what is the best way, whether you're doing um, one lump sum every week. So you're having one of these transactions happen on a weekly basis or how you want to do it. And you got to be careful because you don't want to be carrying a lot of cash. So uh, th just keep that in mind. Okay. Next estimated payments. Small business taxpayers often need to make quarterly estimated tax payments to cover their tax obligations. And these are your estimated tax forms. Um, if you haven't filed one of these before, your CPA will know he can provide you the documentation, or you can go direct to the IRS and fill it out in uh, IRS direct pay. So the 10 form 1040 ES estimated tax for individual will help to figure these payments. Okay, again, the fastest way to make these payments go direct to the IRS. Um, and make your payments there. They don't cost you anything as well. Now they're giving a basis for records. Okay. Good records assist in monitoring a business, a business's progress, tracking deductible expenses, and can substantiate items reported on tax return. A good record keeping system includes summary of all business transactions. Generally, it is best to record transactions daily. Okay, this is all standard stuff as well, right? So um, they have a link here in the records part where you can figure out how they want you to do your record keeping. Journal ledger, electronic recording. I mean, this is pretty standard stuff. So again, you need to figure out a tax strategy with your CPA, especially if you're starting a cannabis business. The, this is some of the, one of the things that I think is looked over by 95% of owners out there. They don't realize setting up um, their business in a certain entity will affect them long-term uh, and, and can really, really steal everything they work for at the end of their business when they want to sell it. So guys, I stress, I can't stress this more, but there's more information on the website. Guys, this is going to be tied to the um, episode. You'll see the links in there, but I would go through this. I mean, it's worth, it's worth checking it out. Make sure you understand what it is because uh, you can be able to use it to your advantage if people aren't going to um, if people don't understand that this has come out, especially when you're talking to tax collectors. So and this also got some frequently asked questions. Now, how helpful is this? <sighs> One thing I'm getting out of it, the IRS knows that this is going to be legalized. I mean, why would we go to this point? I think we're almost going to see they're going to be in place and then they're going to be in place and used to working with cannabis. And then they're going to have to figure out how to allow us to do regular business and swap 280 with taxes. So they're going to have that switch, right? Um, so that there's a state tax now, but then there'll be a federal tax. So hopefully my hope is that um, it's not as onerous as 280E. I hope it's much less, at least so that you guys out there can make a profit because why else are you here? That's kind of the point of having business. That's that's why <laughs> cannabis has is, is, uh, been so stressful because you're, you're just waiting. And, and I appreciate you guys out there just being 
your tenacity for growing your business in a world of regulation where you really can't make money because you're taxed so much. So that's extremely impressive. Keep doing it. Keep pushing forward. Uh, the other thing that this shows me is, you know, change is coming. This is setting the groundwork for you guys out there. And I don't know how exciting that is because we didn't, you know, back even just five years ago, you didn't have IRS talking about, well, how can we do this this way? How can we help out the business owners so that they pay their taxes? Um, it was completely quiet. So you pretty much had to figure it out. And hey, if you got audited, it was like, well, nobody else was showing us or giving us any um, direction. And now you're auditing us. And, you know, we basically don't know the rules. So we're doing everything we can to follow those. So that's great. And the last thing this tells me is the narrative is changing about our industry. You guys are making it happen. It's just moving forward. This is not taboo. This is not, oh, I heard John was starting a cannabis company. What an idiot. He just wants to be a drug dealer. And this is not, you know, he is, he's looking to not pay his taxes. I mean, if, if you guys are remotely involved in cannabis, you know how much tax revenue is being brought in by the state and the federal government right now. Some of, some part of me almost thinks, you know, 280, they, they never want to remove it because they're making so much. I mean, that is literally sucking out all the margins that need to be paid to these businesses for the work that they've put in. And I'll give you guys props out there. It's, this is one of the hardest things ever to do. You know, it's not only hard just being a business owner and waiting to get paid. Because some of you that are listening that are working in cannabis and just kind of like wondering, well, maybe I should start my own thing. This is a great place to be as an entrepreneur. It's awesome, right? This, that's, that's an exciting part. However, the reality to this thing is most of these cannabis owners are barely making their own rent at home because they are paying out everything that comes in. And for those of the employees that, well, I've been here a year and I want, you know, I want to get um, a raise. You know, I need a raise because uh, why? You know, well, because I feel like I've been here long enough. You know, that's not an excuse. And if you want to create a good relationship with the owners of that company, you need to go above and beyond to receive raises because that owner isn't even paying himself right now. I, I used to see it where it'd come one, two, sometimes three times around, and I still was making peanuts at the time. I was making just enough to get by and feed myself and pay my rent, okay? So what, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that what you guys are doing is working, and we're seeing it now at the IRS level. That's insane. And I applaud you guys for that. So keep pushing forward. And you guys that are employees thinking about trying to become better employees or start your own thing, really take this to heart. Because if you can come and become an asset for your owner, then that makes sense for a raise. But just getting a raise because you've been there for, you know, a short period of time. When I say short period, 12 months or longer. that doesn't mean that you deserve a raise. Figure out how to become valuable to that owner, how you can save him time and money, and then ask for 
well, what can I do to, I want to be more valuable, but I also want to create a better life for myself. What can I do to do that? Have those discussions with him. He will appreciate it and he will understand that you're not just thinking about yourself. You're actually thinking about the company and about the team. So in ending, culture is a lot of the success of businesses, creating that culture, understanding where everybody's at is a big part of it. And you as an owner have it all on you. But employees, there's a little part that goes to you as well. I mean, the the guy that has employed you or company that has employed you has risked everything to be here. And you understanding that and knowing that they don't sleep a lot at night because they have so many responsibilities and they want to make sure they take care of you and your families by providing a job and a great place to work. And just remember that guys. Anyway, thanks so much for listening. Um, please check out the episode at plantproblem.com. It'll have all the links in there and follow us on any of our social medias. We continually come out with new information for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. See you guys next time. Thanks so much for listening. You've just listened to another insightful episode of Plant Problems. If you like what you heard so far, don't forget to tell your friends and colleagues. For additional resources or to leave a review, head over to plantproblem.com. Join us again next week on Plant Problems with Tony Frischconnect. We look forward to having conversations with you as we go along this journey.